Hey guys, Olaf here from LLC. So, as promised, now we're gonna do the fuel pump on the other side. So, what I've done is I actually cut two slits in to make the job here easier and for you guys to actually see it better because now it's pulled back the way it should be. And in here, is our fuel pump system so this one saw its better days as we can see it's not the not the best anymore and this from what I understand looking at it this is actually the unit which has a sensor in for the fuel level but also the filter so in this filter seems to be pretty dirty and so we're going to take this whole thing apart we're going to replace it with the new unit and hopefully the car is just starting fine constantly runs fine and doesn't have the situation that when you start cranking that it takes like a second before it starts because it doesn't get enough fuel through this here and also results in uh, better mileage on the fuel even when it's not that much lower than optimum but let's see so this is the unit again you're going to apply here to crank it open but before you do that you have to remove the fuel hose which is this part here and it's clipped in with a clip system so on you pretty much have to push down on it in order to remove it. Let's see if a key will do the job already, like it should be. Looking at this, it should be just popping over there and releasing this connector there are two pins and you have one on this side and one on the opposite side so let's make sure that this one gets pulled correctly and I see that there is some fuel spillage here or moisture more likely which got into this, but let's see if we get this off uh, without much of a damage. I think what the trick is, there you go, is you actually have to push it a little bit inwards in order to release it. And once it's inwards, On both sides, Let's see if with two keys I can do this without any problems. There you go. All right, and off comes the connector. Now we have this little blue doohickey going here on top and as you can see we have a little bit of gasoline dripping here but that's all fine no problem get that tucked out of the way and now we can take this blue doohickey off hopefully we can just save it Breaking it. There you go. First one. Shit. Second there. And then. Uh, so hopefully it pops over. Yep. Okay. So this little piece is sitting on top. And so that holds 
this connector just in place and then that's pretty much your safety mechanism. That's it. So let's see that I get this all opened up. Yes, I'm stripping here a little bit, but let's see that we get this open up without any bigger issues. I've got this on. Let's see if we get this off. As you can see, it fits on just snug and nice. And then Vacuum this out. All right, so we opened one side up. Now we have to do the same exact thing on the second side here because of two reasons. And it's not very obvious first when you do it first, but the problem is the new fuel filter, so to speak, and level indicator, which is exactly this pump here, which has a level indicator for your tank here, and with that, the two pins, it also contains the filter compartment of all your fuel before it actually goes out to the front of your engine. So these three hoses plus this connector here are connected to your actual fuel pump which sits on the driver's side where the filter for the fuel and everything sits on your passenger side. The passenger side has a passive gasoline suction which is actually this little doohickey intake filter which actually allows you to suck in the gasoline and it is also under tension with the strength so it can always be pushed down against the bottom if you can see the spring again oh you guys can see it with that spring you can see that it pushes actively against the bottom of the tank but in order to hook these hoses up and you cannot change the hoses on this side that's a big disaster you actually do it on this side therefore you have to reopen your pump and take your pump out so you can change that quick so let's do this here quick there you go this out. This one gave me some headaches last time I had to do it, but we'll get our done. So get this out because this one is squeezed in tight. There you go. And you can see there's a couple things to it. And there are also three hoses connected to it. So and this hose here is the one which is the most important. The small one here is just clipped in, which is the backflow. And I believe this big one is also a backflow. I believe that it is. Could be wrong. 
but let's get now that disconnected here and there's a little connector with it so this little wide doohickey in there is actually the one which you have to push in in order to open up the valve so it can be removed. I did it wrong the first time but corrected it. So there's a little zip tie holding here some stuff in place and there's a two pin connector which is going here to the top of your pump which is this. So that one has to be taken out because that is being pulled back. Once you pulled it all back you can actually, I'm looking right now, I'm on reserve reserve and I still have a good amount of gasoline in here on this side. So and I've got some fresh new debris here. Oh, lovely. So anyhow, so we get this all exchanged and so it has to be pushed through the gasoline but once we have that exchange um, the engine should start after the air is being evacuated and everything um, just fine and it should just work fine. I believe that when we did the first initial exchange here that something started sucking air one way or the other way so we'll figure that out. I'll take out the pump over there, uh, the filter unit over there which is this one here in a second once I have all these fuel lines here disconnected and yes you can put a little hose to it and as you can see I just pulled with the two fingers these two hoses off because they are just clamped in there's nothing holding it other than a plastic clamp on the side um, the one here this one is the most important one see if we can get this one I'm just easily off by just pushing it in lovely gasoline smell here everywhere so let's see string on to pull it across because there's a thinner part here but it's not that thin that you can't shove it easily through so we'll just get these hoses now pulled back change out the pump over there of a close-up here so you can see these three connectors this one is clipped in this one is clipped in and this is the one where this plastic has to be pushed in in order to be pulled up. So don't pull or anything, just push. And then you have the sensor wire connector, which is this one. So when you look into the pump now, I have to guide you guys in, you see on the pump side, it's sitting on this one. And so when you push that little white tab in, that's what opens up to go over this little ring which is molded in and here's the sensor let me just drop that all into the tank but there's the pump you guys can see it a little upside down so if I turn it around that's what it looks like again fuel tank indicator connector to the pump 
Um, I think these are both backflows because when you look into it and you see there is where the big hose goes in and there's the smaller hose clipped in. That's it. So there's no connection to it. And that's it. So as you can see this is a newer pump. This is the one which I replaced first. So if you guys are interested in this pump to be replaced to watch it. There's a video as well in my inventory. I'm gonna link it here at the end. So you guys can jump to this side if you guys have to still do it. But now we go to the other side and as you can see here close up again. That is the filter system. There's no active pump other than a sensor in there. And so here is the sensor indicator with the fuel. And so this is mechanically going up and actually reading like a resistor type of thing depending on how the float is floating and this little doohickey this is where the gasoline is being sucked in so it's being sucked in here can go up I'm not 100 percent sure this hose or spewed into that hose and so when it goes up here, it goes up here. And there's the other one as well going there. And it all goes into this compartment itself. And this compartment is where the fuel filter sits actually in. So if you only need to replace the fuel filter, that's the one on the passenger. If it is the pump, it's on the driver's side. Removed and exchanged. So, again, put your fuel hose out of the way, remove your fuel filter system, and that is pressed in, haha. <laughs> so, on that side, I had an issue to put it back in, here it is, to get it out, there it is. Now it's out, and as you can see, there's a twist to it. But asset unit and this unit is looking pretty done, pretty nasty. And when you compare it, oh, this tank is almost empty, empty, empty. So that's maybe explaining what's happening is that if this side gets all the way empty, here I can reach in now without a problem. Let's see what I get. Alright, let's pull out this little crap without breaking and ripping anything else off. Yeah. It's a little tricky. This one hangs in there. So, let's get this all out. And as you can see, it's Pretty dirty, and I'm filling all the fluid back in the tank. So there you can see the difference, old, new. So I just vacuumed a little bit just to get the additional debris out. But so the way the pump, hopefully I can get a position here. The way this pump works is that this system. The hose is running here on top, so you're going to blindly shove it back through if you have a wire or a string attached, uh, makes your life a little easier, but nevertheless you can do it without it. So first things first, two things, the pump comes with a new gasket, this is the old one, which is like a square with a couple grooves in, the new one is just a ring. It's a round ring. So you can see here the difference square to round. Definitely use the new seal. Make sure it's working correctly and it's being pushed in place correctly. Make sure everything is clean. 
that it lays on the outside so that when you put the pump on top it will be forced down. So now I'm looking at this tank and the tank is empty to the point that the bottom maybe has quarter of an inch of gas left yeah and that's it so that's how you can make everything fairly easy so now we go undo this little baggie here from your float and so one of the important things with these floats is that these work actually in the water so over the years they can corrode and there's an air bubble in it so this one is actually full it's not empty so this one is most likely ABS foam block so I'm not 100% sure if that's fully empty or hollow or ABS material in. So now make sure you get your wires in first, go through all this, push it all in place, feed it in, there's not too much of a rocket science to it, to this pump side which is the filter side I always want to say pump but it's the filter side so just work it easily in so it actually goes down into it make sure everything installs nice those here is in the way of course so it's a little bit of a tight situation but once you have the gasket all the way up. Make sure it sits around. And you see there's a little bit of a resistance. But once you have this all in, just make sure it sits all the way around nice. Push it in place. Hold it in place as it is pushed out done with this side already. Take your ring, work it in place with your fingers, still holding down the pump. This way it's a lot easier to reinstall and tighten everything and sealing everything up. Get it into the groove and just turn it just a little bit, just so that's already snug in place. That's all you have to do to hold it down here. Now, being held down, now you can go put the bracket back on, hold it down, and push it back in place. It sometimes flips off, that's the nature of this beast, you do have a self -out. leverage I hope and this is two feet extension so okay once it's clicked in place that's a loud click it snaps in and it's now sealed shut once that's the case you can pull back the cap off put this blue doohickey over gas fuel line back over it and push it on till it snaps in place. Then you are done with this side. Nothing else has to be done on this side. So 
now everything is going to be on the other side again. Filter is in. You're done here. You focus back on the pump side. Alright, this is a little bit of an awkward position, but maybe the only one you can see what I'm doing actually. So now, your pump is full in. As you can see, it's fully submerged. Keep it in. Now you have to grab down there, over to that side. And there should be... There isn't. Get. Quickly the pump moved. Now I can go on the other side. Hope you guys can see it. Yes, so let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see close up what I'm doing. guys have this two pin goes through the inside here underneath the pump and there's a two pin receiver hole click it in and good is now you can do pull this little stopper out and push this hose onto its position till it clicks in and now you have two more hoses, return hoses, which are pump hoses down here, which have to be pumped. Let's see if we can get this in, pushed in place. First one pushed in, and the second one being hopefully pushed in as well. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so this is now clicked in place too. So this assembly is all connected with the filter side. So now you work this pump and sometimes it is a very tight fit to get it back in place here. And then I lost time the issue to get it in. I accidentally opened this one and thought, oh I have to do this side, but <laughs> oh well I have to do the other side. <laughs> already done this side. I even contacted the original seller of this pump and said, hey, you sent me the wrong pump. Uh, yeah. My fault. Sorry, guys. Nothing against your product. That was an internal screw-up on my side. So, let's see that we get this in. And so this hard plastic here is sometimes a little iffy on the top side, so I'm trying to wiggle it in. So it will go back in. That was a struggle last time already. So I don't think this is going to be any easier. Most likely because this pump is not the original pump and the plastic is a tiny, tiny bit bigger. There you go that in. Let's see if we can hammer a little bit. There you go. One little smack on this hard piece will let it snap back in place. Once it's fully snapped in place, you can already put this ring back on because this is now airtight in place and you can actually put your wrench on it and this wrench always needs a lot of force same as on the other side push your hand down on it and it's on as more often you did this as easier it becomes one thing alert so 
Now to close up, you have to take this part through here, get it into this hole again. So best is you just do it before you put the rest in. Just push it back in place, connect here your pin in place till it clicks and you clip this in and you're done. Now this piece goes back over it and you can put your seat back in. Alright again quick reminder what parts you need. A nice hammer, the bracket, uh, extension, these are half inch, and there's your old pump all removed. Gonna cut open the filter in a minute and I'm gonna show you that as well. Some gasoline stuck on me. Alright, so hope you guys can see. Let me see that I can see. Yep, you guys can see, so there's the pump, and to the pump there's a little bit of a twist lock going on here, where this whole assembly is being twisted in, so hopefully I can just this is what this, this trash just broken apart, but one more time, so hope you guys can see it better. There's your lever, which is like a foam, and this actually floats with your gasoline, and that gives the feedback to the sensor, which is a resistor going up and down, and that gives back how much fuel is still left in. This is the spring, so this one can retract, as you guys can see, and then here's where the gasoline is being intake and I'm not 100% sure how it works but it looks like intake here and then being sucked one way pumped one way I think it's pumped this way sucked and pumped and there's the pressure coming there are the other hoses there all eaten up most likely there's a hole even in well, no, but there's your filter assembly. Let's see that we get this here broken. And this side also broken. Since this one is trash, and there's only a twist to it. From what I see, we got still gasoline coming out. So now you guys can see what's actually inside of this. So now I twisted it loose, and it should just pop off, hopefully. Hope you guys can see. Then there's this solenoid there in the back. Yep, there's a little bit of gasoline spilling still. There's some wire, and there's some wire. Let's see what this need. Whoop. That spills a little bit of gasoline. There's some O ring attached to it. I'm guessing this one is part of a filter of some sort. I hope you guys can see. Now this whole unit can just twist this open. to be more inside. Still somewhat tight in. There's 
nothing from the top here, so it, this part down here is one mold piece. I twisted it. Maybe I have to twist it more. Never took one apart, but hey. Always a first, right? So there's a safety clip there. See what happens when that comes off and this one comes off. Let's see if we twist it now back. If this gets us. Ah, there it is. It's coming. Yep. Looks like that's has quite a amount of gas in it and it is very very dirty. So I'm seeing already. Not sure if you guys can see it here, but it's very, very dirty coming out of here. So, let's see. This all has in it. Oh yeah. That's your gasoline. Not the cleanest. Not sure if you guys can see. This is pretty darn dirty. So definitely the filter is in here. So I have now a piece of paper, very clean. Put it in the gasoline and see what it absorbs. A lot of smudge, a lot of dirt. very dirty inside and here is your fuel filter so it's inside your tank hope you guys can see it it's hold in with the ring inside this and there's your fuel filter guys that's your fuel filter and that one is not clean and this one went through 240,000 miles. Yeah, this is broken, frayed apart, so, and it's really, really dirty. So if I put my fingers on it, see how dirt comes out. So. Not every gasoline and fuel is clean, but there you have it. Thanks for watching guys. Now you know where the filter on your Dodge Magna and Chrysler is actually placed inside your tank and it looks like this. Thanks guy. Thanks again.